Um, so hi, everyone. Um, thank you for you know, coming and attending our session here. Uh, both of us worked in a team where we implemented this AI ML data pipeline processing microservices based solution at the edge using um, open source technology where we developed, uh, where we helped, so helped in sustainably automating the whole manual cell staining process. Uh, we used Golang to develop the solution since this is a distributed um, solution uh, deployed at the edge, uh, but our AI pipelines were which basically written in Python. So a few seconds on this slide, our legal team wants us to flash this. <laughs> okay, so this is the um, agenda for us today. I'll be covering uh, the project objectives, Elizabeth will cover the architecture, and then we'll follow it up with demo and uh, challenges and learnings from this project. So before we get started, introduction about ourselves. Uh, my name is Neetu Elizabeth Simon, and I'm a senior software engineer working for Intel Corporation. Uh, my partner in crime is Elizabeth Lee. Uh, she's also a software engineer working for Intel Corporation. And both of us are based out from Chandler, Arizona. So let's get started. Um, so IoT, or Internet of Things, is actually booming currently. Uh, there are so many you know, devices which are getting interconnected and then interacting with each other with very minimal intervention. There are a lot of data being collected, which obviously res uh, uh, results in you know, we can apply AI models to this to get some insights. Now, computer vision applications are becoming very popular based on these AI and IoT in this IoT space, uh, mainly because in the Internet of Things realm, if you consider camera as a thing, that is collecting all these video image, uh, visual data or videos and you no know, images. So that's why computer vision is be becoming very, very popular. And based on the research here, um, by 2033, the global IoT market is to is growing around 3,267.4 you know, billion um, US dollars. Uh, this is mainly happening because you know, there are several new and innovative markets which are coming up, industries providing support to it, and the strong drivers for this is cheaper and faster processes and, um, and wireless networks that is available. The second reason is all the advancements that we are seeing on the AI side uh, with respect to model improvements and you know, optimizations. So our project is basically uh, based on this biopharma use case. Um, usually it's cell analytics that we see in the biopharma field. All these cell AI projects um, usually are image comparisons for anomaly detections. Most of these are like um, AI pipelines. They um, get deployed at the edge and we have to manage them. Now, some of the challenges in this particular field of biopharma is it, it is an interdisciplinary field where we have these data scientists and biopharma experts who need to effectively communicate so that there's no knowledge gap. Uh, the second challenge is you no know, instrument variability because microscopes can have different hardware, different optics, different apertures, which can cause um, you know, the images that are being produced are not consistent with the models you know, that, are, that they are being trained on. Thirdly, labeling is very expensive. Um, it's costly and time consuming. Um, so that's a challenge in this uh, field. And then model deployment. There are two things which are important here. The data science, uh, microscopes, the images that we capture are usually very large, like TIFF files. So transporting them uh, is a challenge there. And then second thing is data privacy. Uh, the labs don't want to share their data outside. So this is where you no know, edge deployment uh, becomes the key. They don't want to send their data to cloud, get the inference back um, uh, back into their labs. So all these challenges can contribute in the you know, performance of our AI models um, not being up to mark. You know, not, they, may, they might not perform as well as they were you know, trained. Um, the particular use case in biopharma that our solution is built on is based on this CHO cell segmentation use case. Uh, this is a common use case in cell therapy and early stage uh, drug development field. Uh, so CHO here refers to Chinese hamster ovary cells. And uh, this is a very uh, preferred cell for protein synthesis because of its ability to make very large complex protein molecules. Um, so in this uh, you know, part of commercial protein production, uh, they have to measure the health viability and the production capabilities. 
Uh, this is like a multi-step process. You can see it's like nine steps here. First, you have to culture these cells. Then you have to stain them, uh, which basically make you, makes use of toxic and no expensive chemicals here. And then lastly, with you know, these stained images, you uh, use it under a microscope to basically get the you know, images out of it. So what we developed here was a reference implementation called as AICST or AI Connect for Scientific Data. This is part of a larger project called as the Cell Image Project, which is uh, funded by the Irish government. And then uh, what they are involved in is basically develop these novel AI tools to you know, support the next generation of cell therapy manufacturing. So we, Intel, we collaborated with this company called Valita Cell, uh, who are specialized in building models uh, for the cell analytics. And then uh, Valita Cell recently got acquired by this pharmaceutical company called Beckman Coulter Life Sciences. So what we developed was this infrastructure which would help, to help us to process all these AI pipelines at the edge using the models which were developed by Valita Cell. So that brings us to the project objective. What is our project objective? Uh, the larger objective is to scale this process of you know, growing, analyzing, and then imaging cells without the use of any toxic reagents and complex processes. So as I mentioned, we you know, partner with Beckman Coulter or Valita Cell to develop these models. And then our reference implementation uh, basically manages these AI pipelines to automatically transfer process and then compare these images at the edge. Uh, this will also allow, uh, allow us to you know, apply different AI models depending on the different type of images that we capture from the microscope. It is a very flexible solution, um, so it's very scalable here because we are using a microservices-based containerized solution. Uh, it can be easily scaled for other use cases in you know, manufacturing, agriculture, or healthcare. So at a very high level, this is our architecture diagram. And you can see how the distributed processing happens here. So on the left side, we have a machine, uh, which, is, uh, which we call it as OEM machine, which, is, which can either run Windows or Linux. Um, and then on our, our right side, you can see the gateway machine, which is basically a Linux machine, which will process all these AI, um, uh, AI machine learning uh, pipelines. So what our uh, OEM machine does is it's connected to an image capturing device, which could be a microscope, could be a camera, or any other computer device. So it's capturing all these images, and then uh, our software will automatically transfer this to the gateway where a particular AI pipeline is run on top of that image to generate some results. Now, these results can be very simple, like JSON string, which is you no know, cell count, which is just telling you how many cells are there in that image. Or it can be a little bit more complicated, producing more files, like output files, which some image segmentations and things like that. This, again, gets automatically sent back from the gateway to the OEM side of it. So we can see all our services are um, microservices based, it's built on top of EdgeX, and they are all dockerized and running on two separate systems here. So now let me hand it over to Elizabeth, who will cover the architecture. So for our architecture, we have uh, some, first we're going to go through some terms. Uh, and so first is our OEM system. And this is the, like Nitu mentioned, this is the device that's connected to our image capturing. So this is connected to our microscope, to our cameras, whatever it is that's getting those input images. Second is our gateway, and that is the higher compute system for that edge processing for model inferencing of those input images. We have our pipeline, which is going to be all the steps involved in that inferencing process from pre-processing to the actual models that are run to any post-processing that needs to run. Uh, we have our job, and this is how we're tracking those input images. So we have one job per input image, and we will track how those images are processed through the system and also connect our results to that particular image. Finally, we have our task. And this is how we're going to match those input images using keywords from the file name and whether it matches or contains a specific keyword in that file name. That's how we're going to figure out whether we should, which pipeline we should run. So this is 
an edgex-based project. Uh, so edgex is an LF edge project that is a framework for IoT edge compute. Uh, we leveraged the application service APIs from edgex, and that allows us to quickly build our Golang-based microservices and have the ability to easily connect to a message bus and to serve uh, the different REST APIs that we needed. EdgeX also helped us provide some of our security features and just enable us to secure the communication and allow us to have like a configuration provider and different services that we leveraged. So in terms of our machine learning pipeline management, we leveraged uh, OpenVINO, which is an Intel open source tool for optimizing inferencing on Intel architecture. We also leverage Intel Getty, which is an Intel platform for data labeling, model training, and optimization. And we use the open source Bento ML project, which is a containerized framework for model serving. So this is our overall architecture. So on the left-hand side, we have our OEM system, which again can either be Windows running WSL or Linux. And then on the right-hand side is our edge compute, our gateway system. So the key thing to note is of all of the microservices, the ones in blue are our Go services that we developed specifically for this project. And then we'll dive a little deeper into these services. So on our OEM side, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with that input device. So that's number one, where we're gonna create our new image for processing. And so once that image is written to the file system, Number two, our file watcher is going to watch specific folders on the file system for new images. Once it picks it up, it will send it to number three, our data organizer. And that's going to check to see if the image should be processed and create a job. Number four, our file sender OEM, that's what's going to send our job and the input file to our gateway side so that the file can be inferenced locally on that system. Number five is our file receiver OEM, and that's what's gonna help pull our files back to the OEM side, any of those results and the output files so that they live locally on that OEM system. Number six is how we're gonna secure our communication between our OEM and our gateway services, and that's using an SSH tunnel. Next, we're gonna move to our gateway. And so our first service here is our job repository, and this is how we're gonna get those jobs to be created in our Redis database, and how we're gonna do updates and things like that to the job. So the second thing that happens on the gateway side is we're going to verify that we do have an image and a task that matches it in order to be able to send it to the pipeline. Number three is our file receiver gateway, and its job is to get the files from the OEM side and write them to the gateway file system. Jumping to the other side, uh, again, our task launcher is gonna help us check that the job has a task and pass the uh, information to the message bus for processing. Finally, we get to our processing step and this is our pipeline execution number five. And this is where we're going to run the model and any inferencing that needs to happen and get those results and potential output files to send them back to the task launcher. The task launcher is going to then, number six, check the results and see if there are output files to be able to send them back to the OEM. If there are output files, it will send that information to number seven, which will publish the job on our file sender gateway and make a request to our OEM site to let it know that there are files that need to be pulled. Finally, those files, number eight, will get sent back to the OEM to be written to that local file system. So putting it all together, we have our little animation. And so we'll get that input file, write it to the file system, the file watch will pick it up, send it to the data organizer to create a job. Then we'll check to see if there's a task that matches. And in this case, there is. So we'll send that information back and pass the job to the file sender OEM, which will then send the files to the file receiver gateway, 
to be written to the gateway file system. Once those are written, we will go back to the task launcher, check that there is a task that matches, and because there is, we'll go to our message bus to send that information to the pipeline to be executed. As the pipeline runs its inferencing, it'll write any output files to the file system and send the results back to the task launcher. Because there are files to be written, we'll get that to the file sender gateway and send them to the file receiver OEM, and then we'll get those output files and write them back to the file system. Then I'll pass it to Mitu for our demo. Thank you, Elizabeth. So before we move into the demo, um, I wanted to touch base on a few uh, points. The first one is our user interface. We built it on top of Angular UI. Uh, this will allow our customers, which is you know, bench scientists, to create tasks, monitor the jobs, and you know, we also added the features for observability and log analytics. <coughs> The second thing to note here is the input and output file folders that we have on our file system for both of these machines. So you can see the top one is the OEM files, and the bottom one is the gateway. We have both input and output folders in both of these machines. Um, and then in the gateway side, you can see we have another folder called as the archive. So once the microscope captures all these input images, it gets stored on the input folder of the OEM file, which automatically gets transferred to the input folder on the gateway side. And then our AI pipeline uh, applies the models, processing happens, all the output gets saved in the output folder of the gateway files. And then our AI CSD uh, solution automatically transmits that all of that from output of the gateway to the OEM files. Now, we don't want to be storing all these images on the gateway side, so we archive, archive them and then delete all these images from the input and output folders of the gateway machine. The third thing I want to um, emphasize is the pipeline management. So um, this is the tool we are using um, to basically manage all our pipelines, AI pipelines. Uh, this is called as Bento ML. It's an open source tool which uh, allow us to build, configure, and deploy these AI ML pipelines at the edge. It helps us to you know, create, containerize, and then deploy these machine learning pipelines as Docker services. So as an example, you can you know, create a pipeline written in Python, which is doing some pre-processing and some post-processing, doing some inferencing. All of this can be converted into a service, REST-based service, using Bento ML, and then you could just deploy that as Docker containers. So we were able to integrate this tool uh, to our solution very seamlessly. So the next uh, piece is the demo, and I'll, it, it is a video, it's not a live demo, <laughs> because this is not my development machine. So I'll quickly go over this, and um, I'll just um, go over what, what's happening. So just one thing to note here is, uh, in this demo, we are running all our services in one machine. So that means both our OEM and the gateway is the same machine. It's, it's not the distributed setup, because it's difficult to take a demo a video uh, doing that. So all our services are running here in a uh, distributed fashion. So let's start the demo here. And the first process is basically you know, um, start all our containers. We have a make file to do that. And then once we start that, um, we, can, we can see all our containers are up and running. We, almost have like 20 containers running. This is both the service side, um, the OEM and the gateway services, as well as EJX services, which help, helps us to secure the communication between the two machines. Next, let's look at the UI side. So this is our AICST UI. We have an option to see all our tasks that could be created here. Uh, the first one is a pipeline simulator task. Uh, and we can just go over what, what are the details that need to be provided to create a task. So first is the name of the task that you want to create. Uh, we are using a pipeline simulator here, which means that we had, no, this was built for our integration testing. We are considering the whole pipeline management as a black box for us. We are just concerned about the input and output. We wanted to build something. You know, we, we give in an input, and we just get back an output. So this is a simulator. And then we select the from the drop down. We select the pipeline which needs to be run. Um, and here we selected the file and results pipeline. That means when I pro give the in input image, 
uh, it gets processed and it's going to generate an output file as well as a result to that. The next piece you see there is a job selector. This is the filtering piece. So what happens is if I get an image from the microscope uh, and it's named as pipeline sim sample, this particular pipeline gets selected and it's executed on that image. So in this way, we can you know, customize the pipelines to the input image that we are getting. And then we just save that. So in the, in the next piece, you can see this is the tab where we can see all the jobs. Um, currently, we don't have any jobs running, and we can just see how we create a job. So now going back to the file system, um, so as I mentioned, both our machines are one in this stage. So we have a folder uh, for gateway files and a folder for the OEM files. And each of them have corresponding input and output folders. So both of these folders are currently empty because we don't have any images getting processed here. So now let's select a sample image. This is, again, a simulated image, which we just got from our customer. Um, and then this is a TIFF file. So this is how the microscope would work um, along with the OEM machine. Microscope is going to capture the image. It's going to copy it into this input file. And we're just doing the same thing. We just copy paste it into the folder directly. So I just copy pasted that into the folder. And now when we go back and check our UI, we can see we have a job which got created. It's already complete. Job is complete. And then we can see the pipeline also processed. So the pipeline status is also complete for that particular input image. Uh, the owner for this job is currently none because it's already been uh, processed. Otherwise, we actually show, show which microsco uh, microservice has the ownership for that file, which would help with the debugging purpose in case something goes wrong. Um, and then you can see the results um, column there. That's just a dummy result that we generated which is basically a you know, cell count, uh, just saying that you know, the cell has these many um, cells in it, this image. And then here is where we can view both the input and the output uh, files. So you can see it's a TIFF file. This is what we uh, provided as input. And this is the output generated. Again, it's just the same image because we were just simulating. We are not actually running any model inferencing here. Now, the bench scientist also has the option to you know, act, uh, verify these images because you know, obviously uh, no model is perfect and you know, we can have false positives. So they can either approve or reject uh, these results. So here we just approve it. OK, so now let's go back to that file system and then look at all our files. So on the output side, you can see the output file, which was generated on the gateway side, got automatically um, transported to the output folder on the OEM side. And this is the simulated output file that just got um, created. Okay. And then now, if we look at the gateway file side, we can see all these folders. Input is an output will be um, empty because we have deleted and we have archived all these images. Now we also have a reject folder there. Um, we are not, we didn't reject any images, so that is also empty. Okay. So now um, going back to the task page here, we can see we have another uh, sample like task created. And this is for image classification. So here we actually used a ResNet model, the open source ResNet model for image classification. Uh, we did the same process, built it, created the task. Uh, and then we, when we provide the image, the output that we receive is, is, is just a JSON file saying what is the accuracy of, you know, of that particular object being detected in that image. Um, so the next piece I want to go through is if, if you're building a model on your own, how do you integrate that into the system, right? If I have a model um, that I have generated, how do I include that, integrate that easily into the system? Okay. So for that purpose, we are using um, a cancer detection model. Uh, and that model was basically generated using the Intel tool called Getty. 
And you can see um, once the model is trained, we collected all the data set from Kaggle and just trained the model, got everything um, downloaded as a zipped folder, and then we just have it on our file system here. So that's the zip folder that you see. So how do you integrate or how do you build an AI pipeline and integrate that into the, sol into the solution? That's, it's very easy. Um, so we go back to our UI, and then we have an option to upload the models. So just go there, provide the name of your model. Uh, this model was generated from Getty. So, so that's why we are mentioning it as the type is Getty. And then we just go into the file system and then upload that zip folder. So once this process is done, uh, what the solution does is it immediately um, creates and stores this model on the gateway side. On the gateway machine, it creates a folder and it, it puts the whole model into there. Okay? And then correspondingly, it creates a pipeline because the, as a bench scientist, as a user, I need to know what pipeline I need to select. Okay? So once this is saved, we can go and create a new task. Okay, so now, um, yeah, this is, I'm showing the file system where the model got saved there on the gateway end. So now we create a task and we provide a name, which is like cancer, cancer detection, cancer. And then the second piece is the drop down where we select that particular pipeline that we want to run. Okay, so, so you can see here, the pipeline got automatically generated, and then we just select that particular cancer Getty demo pipeline. And then again, the job selection piece, uh, what we are seeing the filtering case here is if my uh, image that I'm getting from the microscope contains uh, cancer in that file name, cancer Getty in that file name, I will run this particular pipeline. Okay? And then pass on the model parameters. Um, so now let's see the testing. So here we actually have a image, which is a cell image. This does not have any cancerous cells. So we uh, now simulate the same thing. We copy it into the OEM um, side on the input folder uh, to see that you know, a job is created here. So you can see the job got created. Uh, the job status is complete. Our pipeline also ran. Uh, and then you can see the results there. Uh, it's basically saying that there is no cancer in that cell, uh, in that image, and then the probability or the accuracy is 100% here. And now we can view both the input and the output images. So this is the actual input image that we passed on, and then in the output image, it just, we added a label there saying that no, there's no cancer detected in this particular input image. So we just approve that. Now in the second example, we actually take an input image which has cancerous cells. Um, so let's do the exact same process, copy it, paste it in the input folder on the OEM side. And then we can see a new job is created. It's actually complete. Pipeline is also processed. And then now you can see the results there. Uh, it's a JSON. Uh, string, it's saying that, no, it's detected some cancer cells there, and the probability is no 46%. Um, this model training was done just for the, uh, for the demo sake, so no, we were not aiming for any accuracies here. Um, so now we can see the input files. You click on the view images, and you can see the first one is the input image, which is, you no know, those blue cells are the cancer cells. And then when you come down, uh, we can see the output files. Um, it's created a bounding bo box around the cancerous cells that got detected. And then that's our output file. So you can see how easy it was to you know, create your own model and then come and just you know, uh, integrate it into the entire solution. So this um, is the whole demo and then now, next, let's get into the challenges and learnings from this project. Um, so the first one is open source project shift. Uh, this was a situation which was very unpredictable for us. Um, if you remember from the architecture diagram, which Elizabeth uh, had shown earlier, we had this black box um, for pipeline execution. We, as a team, we cared only about the input that we are providing and the output that we are receiving it back. We didn't 
care about the implementation piece. So initially, uh, when this project got started, we were working with TIPCO. Um, they had an open source project called as Project Air, which would help you to build, configure, and deploy these AIML pipelines at the edge. Um, but we were almost done with all the development by end of 2022. And then we get to know that um, TIPCO is getting acquired. <laughs> so they're discontinuing this entire project. And we did not receive any support from them after August of 2022. Um, we, do, we had the deadline to you know, release our own software as an open source project. So we started uh, to look for alternatives. right? So we had to immediately pivot and then look for any other options available, which which would help us do this. So this is where Bento ML, um, uh, we came across Bento ML, which is again an open source tool, which helps you to you know, build, configure, and deploy these AI ML pipelines at the edge. So it was very easy to integrate, bring in that tool, integrate with our solution, and you know, make it a complete solution. And we were able to successfully uh, uh, release this in June of uh, last year. The second challenge is, you know, um, this is a distributed system, so we have two different machines here running two different operating systems. And how do you deploy the solution was a challenge here. So at the initial stages, what we did is on our OEM service, which is running the Windows operating system, um, first we would build these OEM targets on our Linux machine and then copy all the bat files into a zip folder and then you know, copy them over to the OEM machine. So ma a manual process. And then we would use PowerShell to just start all the services there. Uh, on the gateway side, it was you know, pretty straightforward because we were using Linux and uh, Docker containers. So we basically build all our gateway targets, generate our uh, you know, Docker builds, get the IP address of the gateway, and then just uh, start all our services um, using the IP. Uh, but this, uh, we did face automation difficulties with, with this because of the you know, manual step we have on the Windows side. And some of our GitHub actions were not working properly. And then later on, uh, we had the challenge with respect to security. Uh, we were not allowed to release this without securing our communication. And uh, that resulted in a lot of uh, other work, uh, which also involved changing the whole deployment strategy on the OEM side. And let me hand it over to Elizabeth, uh, who will cover all the security challenges. So of course, with uh, having two systems, uh, implementing security was definitely a challenge, just to make sure that the communication between our OEM system and the gateway was secure, and that the files would be securely transferred as well. So. Our current solution uses an SSH tunnel, uh, a set of services basically to create an SSH tunnel in order to accomplish this. Uh, and we also leverage this from EdgeX. So they had a sample uh, SSH tunnel service that we were able to leverage and use um, in addition to other security measures that we pulled from EdgeX. And so these security measures included the use of Vault for secure key management, secure console, as a secure configuration provider, Redis as our secure database and secure message bus, and Kong in order to secure our APIs. And then when it came to deployment, uh, this distributed system uh, forced us to have a more interweaved deployment, which is more complex and sensitive to the order of operations. So we'll start, in order to do the deployment, we'll start on our gateway side and we have to generate SSH keys. This is just a make target that we can use uh, to help us generate the keys. Uh, from there, number two is to get the public key from the gateway uh, so that the SSH tunnel can be created. Number three, uh, now that we've changed our deployment, we have Docker containers on both the OEM and gateway side. So we just need to build these services using the make target Number four would be to grab the IP address from the OEM side. And number five is to update the configuration with that OEM IP address. And then six, we'll start our gateway services and authorize the OEM before finally being able to start number seven, start the OEM services and get everything up and running. So once everything's up and running and talking to each other, we're ready to process images. So in conclusion, we were finally able to release as an open source sample in June of 2023 on open.intel.com. We have a 
maintained an actively developed project uh, on our GitHub page. We are also able to successfully deploy our solution in uh, Beckman Coulter's labs in both Denver and Seattle. And uh, Beckman Coulter was also able to optimize their model using OpenVINO for better AI performance on Intel hardware. And the solution is also scalable to other use cases in, uh, in retail and uh, agricultural use cases. So in terms of future work, uh, this could be integrated into a retail or industrial use case to help send messages to sensors. Uh, in the future, it would be great to be able to integrate model management so that you have better traceability and versioning on those models. Uh, we would also like to extend the solution to handle video streams or extend the solution to have multiple OEM systems using the same gateway. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, that was at the beginning. Um, so, so the use case basically is. Let me go back and show you the slides. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so our s s the the customers that we were working with uh, are into the biopharma side. They do cell analytics. And um, this particular use case that they were working on is for cell segmentation. And um, I mean, this Cho is the Chinese hamster ovary cells. It's used for protein synthesis. Uh, this is where they, the sustainability piece comes. Because uh, when you do a large scale production, uh, the companies have to measure the health of these cells and the production capabilities. And this entire thing is a multi-step process where they have to culture the cells, they have to do the staining on these cells, and then they do the imaging and uh, using the microscopes and get all the you know, insights. So the middle process that you s see between step one and nine involves the staining process, which is you know, using all these toxic and expensive reagents, chemical reagents, um, uh, no, to get um, to be able to do the imaging, and once these cells are stained, it's most more likely that you know, they're discarded; they cannot be reused. Uh, so, to avoid all these step, right, um, our customers developed a model which could directly take them from step one to step nine without the whole use of any toxic chemicals. No, no, it's sustainable cell um, production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? not, then we are done. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and listening to us.